Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Please enjoy this video on the Political Voices Network. Listen, I thought of you when, you know, they started, the, the Kamala twice put down the lock him up chance mm -hmm. and said the courts are going to take care of this. We're going to beat him in November. And that was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's talk about that. Um, it's so funny. I think I asked Ellie Mistal on New York City panel, like, what's going to happen? And he said nothing. And I was like, boo, Ellie, tell us what we want to <laughs> hear. <laughs> But, but, you know, I know uh, uh, our friend Tristan Snell, you know, feels the opposite, that he's going to get sentenced to prison in September. And, oh. the, you know, the other cases, uh, Georgia, J6, he's going to get convicted. Um, let's talk about J6 for a second. So Judge Chutkin, right, has the case back after this ridiculous immunity rolling from the Supreme Court. So I'm just reading. Uh, she's going to have to now go line by line through the special counsel Jack Smith 45-page indictment separating the charges that involve official acts from those that are unofficial. Uh, the former must be dismissed. The latter might survive. So now Chutkin has to clean up the mess the right-wing majority made in its ruling, which created a shockingly broad yet poorly defined to find zone of immunity from criminal prosecution for presidents who can argue they were engaged in their official duties. So this is this mini trial we've been talking about um the only chance the american people will have to get more clarity on what his actions were on j6 i mean i always say to you glenn you don't have to be a lawyer to go how are any of these official acts at january no. 6th yeah the supreme court ruled that the constitution is unconstitutional when it comes to holding donald trump accountable for his crimes not only is that insane and living in the legal upside down it's something that we have to change you know when you have Supreme Court justices who abuse their discretion and put themselves above the law and try to cancel out parts of the Constitution, we have governmental remedies for that. Impeachment investigations in Congress and criminal investigations by the Department of Justice of corrupt and apparently criminal Supreme Court justices. These are things we have to do because you cannot let the Supreme Court negate portions of the Constitution. But now turning to the impact on the J6 prosecution, we are going to see some type of hearing we don't know exactly what it will look like but trust me judge chutkin don't play um we will have hearings and what she has been tasked with the supreme court to decide is which of donald trump's crimes which of his criminal acts we should give immunity to and which of his crimes which of his criminal acts we should not give immunity to well the good news is we're going to see all the evidence of his crimes and his criminal acts, all of them, even the ones that the Supreme Court suggests should enjoy some immunity, because to make that decision, we have to see the evidence. Yeah. Judge Chutkin has to see the evidence and assess it and make some sort of a reasonable decision based on this horrific Supreme Court opinion. So you, you're right. It's going to be a mini trial. It's going to be important and informative. And we're going to see some of the evidence from some of those Republican witnesses who Jack Smith compelled to appear before the grand jury and testify about the crimes of Donald Trump. And that transparency is going to be good and important. And at the end of the day, I absolutely agree. As long as Donald Trump doesn't get elected and he won't, he is going to be convicted in case after case and sentenced to prison Wee. in case after case. We I have my happy clappy legal Yay. lab back. Yay. <laughs> Take that, Ellie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love him too, but... <laughs> um, by the way, you said Tim Walls is clearly a varsity pick, while J.D. Vance isn't even up to stepping on the playing veal. So, J.V. Vance? That's funny. Hey. <laughs> but he is just spectacular, isn't he? Steph, what a great pick. You know, he was a football coach. He was a high school social studies teacher, veteran for 24 years, could have retired at 20 years, decided to stay 24 years. Um, he was a governor. You know... Um, he really is the opposite of somebody like Donald Trump because Tim Walls understands what it means to dedicate yourself to a life and to a purpose bigger than just you, your own enrichment, your own engrandizement, right? He is exactly what is right for this moment, and that is why the Republicans are scared to death yeah. of a, of a Harris-Walls ticket. But you know what, Steph? I've heard it said— we're not going back. No, and we're not going back. We're not no. going back. Mm -mm. That's clever. We should. You're not going to send that to. Along with girls on fire, let's send that to the Harris. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Um. Yeah. You said he's the perfect antidote to Trump's narcissism, divisiveness, and hate. And I think that's part of what's driving this movement. Not only how f legitimately, organically fantastic these candidates are, but how exhausted people are by, by Trump and all of that. 
hate and uh, lies and just everything we watched yesterday. Craziness, right? Chaos. Yeah, they constantly. are. They are joyous and joyful democracy warriors. And I'll tell you, everybody is getting swept up in their optimism because our future can be bright. Our future is what we decide to make it. And yeah. boy, Harrison Walls are, are trying to make it good for the American people. And the American people sense that. Think about it. We have had gloom and doom and death and destruction and everything's going to hell from Donald Trump and the Republicans. And even the good guys who have been trying to hold Donald Trump accountable, like Jack Smith and yeah. Bonnie Willis and Alvin Bragg, it's still it's not gloom and doom, but it's struggle and strife. And we're fighting against corrupt judges and corrupt Supreme Court justices. Even the good guys don't get to, to present an optimistic uplifting message to the american people because they're fighting this battle every day well now we've got the hope we've got the optimism and it's realistic hope and optimism for the future of america and that is why it is yeah. catching fire well and i don't know if you saw lawrence he was just spectacular last night you know taking the media to task but you know glenn part of me when i watched even clips of that yesterday i'm like maybe they're, doing, they're literally televising his nervous breakdown like maybe they're doing us a favor because i can't imagine what new voters that got <laughs> like, yeah. you're like wow this guy is really delusional i mean it, as lauren said literally everything was a lie or it was just completely crazy it, it was you know what did he say what did he say about what well it's, it's very it's deep into the trans oh yeah community lots of other things <laughs> <laughs> yeah what? He doesn't know what he's talking about what yeah. Um, yeah, and you said, so Trump is campaigning today at Mar-a-Lago? I guess he's even lost the support of the voters at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> yeah, yeah Mar-a-Lago is, is apparently to... a, ba a, a battleground resort is what Mar-a-Lago <laughs> has become. So listen, and, and Lawrence O'Donnell, who I, I, I love dearly and, and respect and admire, and I call him Mr. 10 o'clock. Boy, was he dead yes. on last mm -hmm. night. Now, I don't mind seeing Donald Trump's unhinged rants yeah. televised because that highlights that the man is old, decrepit, and yeah. unfit, you know, to serve in any capacity. But I so agree with Lawrence that, you know, the media continues to fall into the trap of giving both sides of issues yeah. equal time. Like people who are criticizing, you know, J.D. Vance is criticizing Tim Walls, 24 years of military service because a few months after he decided to retire to do what? Run for office and serve his constituents. <sighs> his unit was apparently notified they would deploy. That is not a legitimate two sides issue. That is not the kind of thing that the media should be giving air to every day, in my humble opinion. Yeah. Um, but they're doing it and no. they're falling into the same trap that they fell into in, in 2016. But, Steph, I love what you said. You said doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter anymore yeah. because we will overcome all of that yeah. as well. We the people.